remove on the basis that prior to the decision of the committee, uh, the applicants indicated willingness to enter into such a land exchange arrangement in principle. Uh, that indication has been given. Uh, there is a, an agreement in principle to enter into a land exchange arrangement to um, implement, if I, if I put it that way, to implement one of those options, the option being the provision on the site uh, of secondary school provision uh, and the Haddon Road site being swapped to the developer to provide like, the replacement housing that would otherwise be provided on the site. Um, so, Jim, I do, I do uh, feel it's important that members have in front of them that detail. I appreciate it is a significant amount of detail, uh, but um, I, I think it is fair to say that, in summary, the proposals enable the provision of suitable um, land arrangements and funding arrangements to ensure that this uh, development, because there is, there is also an, an element for the ASR, scheme, ASR 5 scheme to be uh, factored in due course, but for this development, <coughs> the, the proposals can deliver um, significant additional education capacity uh, which meet the needs uh, generated by the proposals. Thank you, Ken. Members, Councillor Gary Jones. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I, I've got a, um, a lot of sympathy for the applicant in, in this scheme. I, I'm uh, very disappointed by the, the approach of the, uh, the County Council, who in education matters in Bishop's Dorford always seem to be behind the game and not totally in tune with uh, um, the thinking of the residents of uh, Bishop's Dorford. In this particular case, um, we've got a situation where there are two options for a secondary school site going forward. Both have significant implications and I would have preferred to see um, County Council effectively get off the fence and say which is their preferred site. The, the site on Haddon Road um, will clearly have an impact back onto traffic and I don't want to dwell on that any further but um, you know, if that were the preferred site then I think we need to see the, uh, the full implications of that including other roundabouts and pedestrian crossings and all sorts of things on Haddon Road. Um, if the site, if the preferred site is, is the, um, the other one within the existing ASRs, um, then there is this, um, this notion of, of going beyond the A120 into, uh, into the Green Belt. And I'd like to have seen a bit more detail about the land take, the access, um, whether indeed that's within the area um, uh, of this outline planning application, I'm not, not even clear of that, but um, you, it may be that the applicant does have a little bit more time to deal with this following this meeting, um, and if that is the case, I would implore the county council to get off the fence, decide which is their preferred option, and let's have a rigorous uh, evaluation of that preferred option, please. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Chairman, without labouring the point yet again, it says in here that her primary schools are full to capacity or nearly full to capacity. Children already are having to go to school in Stansted, Little Haddam, Great Hanbury, and Much Haddam, because we do not have the capacity for them in Bishop Salford. Again, that is even more car journeys. Not only that, some families, which I know personally, have got three children at three different schools because one school can't take all the children. So parents, some of them, haven't even got cars, are having to walk round the town collecting their children who all come out at the same time. Now, you can't put young children on the bus. Now again, this is the problem, how long, and I, I, I hear what uh, Kevin said about this, you know, we can't expect the primary school to be built before the, the rest of the development, but where are these children going to go to school? 
There is no room for them. Our secondary schools are virtually full to capacity with the result that some children are having to go up to Stansted Mount Fitchett. Now, Hearts and Essex has a covenant. They have to let, that's why it's called the Hearts and Essex School. They have to let in so many children from Essex. So they are bound to have to do that. But why should the children of Bishop Thortford have to go all around the area if this is built because there is not enough provision in our own primary schools and secondary schools? Yes, Chairman, just, just help me, really, uh, I hope. Um, in, in terms of the favoured option, I think it's only fair to say that the Council's latest uh, response to, to us does say the best approach to address secondary um, school child yield, child yield from the proposals is the provision of 5 FE secondary school on the BSS site. So, um, you know, insofar as any, any fence sitting is going on, I think, uh, I think we do have an indication that that is the preferred approach of the County Council, so I think it's, it's fair to say that. Uh, Chairman, I think what we're, we're saying, what we don't want to do is we don't want to close off uh, other options. So there is a paper approach, uh, there is a framework in place to, to ensure it's delivered, um, but we're not closing off options at this stage. I think it's important to remember. Um, time scales of provision, again, uh, you know, I, I understand the point. The, uh, again, the legal agreements seem to ensure that appropriate triggers are in place um, to deliver on um, schooling at the appropriate time. And we're, we're going to be advised on those, of course, by the, uh, the County Education Authority. Um, certainly, the, the developers I know have recognised the issue that uh, schooling needs to be provided at time appropriate to the development on the site. And particularly because of there's a, a wonderful entry crime on the, the western neighbourhood, and also have all have recognised the, the requirement to bring forward the development on the eastern neighbourhood in terms of schooling early to, to meet those needs. So, uh, a, a framework will be put in place that will be advised by the, the County Council of Asia to the timescale. Thank you. Members, could I just at this point say that um, it's nearly 20 to 10, and we have within the next few minutes to decide whether we. Uh, continue uh, and put them onto a set time, or until, or unless we continue until we finish debate and uh, agree the recommendations or otherwise. So, would members prefer that we have a set time, say 11 o'clock, to finish this debate this evening, or do you want to just go on until we finish at the end time? Will we have to make a decision shortly? Which would you prefer? That's my right. just want to say you don't want to be in the same room as me after midnight. No. <laughs> 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 right. um, do the members wish we just keep going until we finish? Is that agreed? Right, we'd rather like a two minutes time for break now, please. Okay, we'll return for five minutes. Thank you very much, members, and thanks to the public for continuing the debate. Just a, a brief introduction. Um, we've already seen that the development is providing 58 uh, hectares of uh, open land for passive recreation. Um, the blasphemy with Hoggart's Wood and uh, Ash Grove, quite considerable areas for people to enjoy. And uh, you've seen reference to a green infrastructure management plan which would be required to ensure that those areas are properly managed with uh, biodiversity, ecology uh, in mind, but also uh, managing the way that people access and enjoy those areas. So that's all good. But the provision for sport as such is limited to 2.42 hectares 
formal sports provision in the form of a, a football pitch at uh, Hobbit's Park. Uh, being uh, designed now as a football ground, uh, which could be occupied by a local club, and uh, the, the Swifts have recently expressed an interest in that. Um, and that's a good thing, because it would mean that there was a proper sports provision, a very well-equipped uh, football ground provided within the development itself. But otherwise, the opportunities for new pitches and uh, opportunities to develop other sports are rather limited. Uh, unless one goes outside the site into Cricket Field Lane and elsewhere in the town. And so the, the recommendation is that uh, a fairly substantial Section 106 payment is made in lieu of on-site provision, uh, £3 million, which would be vested with the District Council. And the District Council would then be able to work with local sports clubs in order to create a strategy to see the best way in which to invest in sport within the town. And, and bearing in mind, of course, that uh, were ASR 5 to be approved as well later, there'd be further provision for that purpose. So we're not saying that anything in particular uh, would be invested in today, although we know a lot of local clubs, the Bishops, Stalford Sports uh, Trust on Cricket Field Lane, the Rugby Club and others all have good ideas for development and they all have high levels of demand, particularly from young people uh, for uh, playing. And uh, we, we would be uh, allowing the District Council there to make critical decisions, strategic decisions as how best to make provision in the future. I've just got one question at this point. I've been a sports person for most of my life, and the two words passive recreation don't seem to go together. <laughs> 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 uh, passive recreation means really not playing sport, but simply walking, enjoying the, uh, the countryside, and so on. Thank you very much. Councillor Andrews. Okay, thank you, Joe. Uh, I'm just picking up on this really uh, on the wing because I haven't. Got too deep into the sports section, but clearly the provision is much reduced, the standards have um, been changed, um, and despite having been changed, the, the offer is probably less than half of the newer, lower standard. But again, we, you know, there are good, job, good opportunities for off site provision. It's more movement, it's more travel, it's more transport, it's more cars, it's off site provision. Sorry, transport game. Thank you for bringing that up again. Councillor Simons. You're not going to like me either, Chairman. The chances of them sending a library bus up to the new development when HCC are cutting back on sending their library buses out is not going to do a lot either, because that's more cars, more transport, and more car parking. Thank no? Thank you. Uh, the next session uh, section is uh, environment and design, <coughs> section 8.6. The first issue is sustainable building we've already touched on. Members have talked about uh, the importance of uh, water conservation. And uh, we've mentioned the fact that uh, the uh, developers are proposing to simply meet the building regulations, at least in the short term, um, in terms of the uh, standards applied to housing. Uh, unfortunately, we're, this is in a state of flux in the sense that the government is uh, reviewing the building regulations. Uh, it has an ambition, as you're probably aware, of zero carbon homes by 2016, which has now been pushed back to 2018, I think it is, or 19. At the same time, they're reviewing the plethora 
of other standards that apply to homes, such as space standards, renewable energy, um, accessibility, wheelchair access, and so on. And they're rationalising those standards. In a sense, I sympathise with the developer at the present time in deciding how to pitch in uh, with a particular standard uh, in a particular phase. Um, my view is that uh, standards will improve through the building regulations and through a new set of national standards within the next 12 months or so, assuming the government puts into effect the things that it is currently talking about. So you will see an improvement in the sustainability of these homes as they go forward. We are concerned about water consumption though in this area. Uh, it's an area of uh, extreme need in terms of uh, water. And so we have asked the developers to ensure that the standard of 105 litres per person per day is, uh, or target, <coughs> is secured by putting in place uh, the, the necessary fixtures and fittings to achieve that. If you go beyond that and you start looking at much lower figures, it gets difficult because then we're talking about grey water uh, recycling. And one of the problems with that is, well, two problems. A, it's very expensive and would have quite an impact on the Section 106 monies. But secondly, the public don't always use those facilities. They don't use them properly or they don't use them at all. They bypass them very frequently. It's, it's rather less well tested technology. So uh, I would recommend at this stage that we look at 105, which is more easily achieved. Thank you very much. Councillor Alexander. I see very little, if anything, at all to do with solar energy. Are you know, expecting solar panels to be on the roof? The Council has no specific policies in that regard, so it's in a weak uh, position to require such things to be provided. However, that is one of the areas that the government's reviewing in terms of standards for housing. Um, it is possible that the energy requirements will simply fall into the building regulations in the future and cease to be part of the, the planning regime. I have to say that policies for uh, on-site renewable energy uh, are not well received by developers. They don't regard them as being an efficient way of conserving energy and reducing carbon. It's better really to put uh, investment into the fabric of properties in order to get better value. So it's one of the areas that's being challenged. Now there's nothing to stop them, I uh, hope they do, uh, doing some exemplary work perhaps in certain parts of the, the, the area because there are people who would like to use uh, solar energy, PV cells and so on to generate electricity on site. That would be an option rather than a, a requirement by this council. And referring to Paragraph 8.6.7 uh, on, on the issue of water usage, uh, and, and the final sentence says the 105 litres standard is relatively cost effective to achieve, that is, the fittings of the home does not depend upon the use of grey or recycled water. Officers are, continu are continuing to negotiate with the applicants to secure this condition. Why is the council being so really livid about this? Why don't you just impose that as a condition? It's, it seems to me that it's not, a, it's not an unreasonable condition to impose. Thank you. Yes, it comes back again to the cost of this, and ensuring that the costs are properly um, accounted for within the, the development, and to see whether there's an impact on the section 106. Uh, but I think, I think the principle is actually accepted. Members, any other questions? No? The uh, green infrastructure on this site is obviously of considerable importance. Uh, it's a, a site that's uh, currently countryside and 
an objective of the uh, design is to uh, have the housing and the neighbourhood centres uh, sit within what is still um, a wooded environment, a green environment as far as possible, accepting that it's uh, residential development. Uh, hedges will be retained, existing mature hedges, existing trees, and very many hundreds of new trees would be planted on this site. So the management of green infrastructure is as important as its provision. And uh, it's suggested that um, a green infrastructure management plan, well, it's, it's been drafted already, but it needs some more work, that that should be uh, the mechanism for, for securing good management, that that in turn would be the responsibility of the, um, the community trust, if you agree with that proposal, that would then manage the, um, the site in terms of those open areas. Um, a number of particular uh, issues have cropped up in consultation in, in respect of parts of the site. Uh, there's been a reference to, for example, trees uh, on Rye Street, next to the proposed access. Um, the, uh, the access as proposed threatened a number of mature trees. Uh, the access was, I'm pleased to say, moved a little. Trees have been preserved and there's scope to put in new planting. Um, on Haddon Road at the roundabout, there's been concern from the uh, Residents Action Group about the loss of trees and hedges and the design that's currently proposed, and I'm, I'm saying that actually slightly anticipating what would come through the detailed design and the other uh, hybrid application, but at the moment we're looking at a design that does again put back a lot of trees and greenery into that location. So the replacement of uh, any losses in terms of trees and hedges has been taken into account and uh, I'm satisfied that uh, in fact this application is, is very good in terms of overall green infrastructure and its management. Thanks very much. Thank you. Um, thanks Chairman. Yeah, it's, it's good to see that there is um, an environmental Preserve um, on, on the site. What, what I'm worried about, and this is probably just quirkiness as applies to me, but one thing that I hate about uh, sort of local authority providing uh, homes is when you arrive in an area and you see a big sign up that says no ball games. I'm slightly worried that it was 8619, you want to protect woodland from the antics of children. Well, children are children, let them play, let them have games in the, in the woods. And then later on, on page 105, there's a suggest suggestion that somebody should be managing pet ownership. Well, what I would say, we don't want to be overzealous in this. This is a, a, a place to live, a place to grow up, a place to enjoy. And I, I don't think it should be a place of restriction. Thank you, Chairman. I'm, I'm concerned about the wildlife living on the site. I understand that, you know, if you build houses, there is going to be major disruption, and we've seen it. We used to have the swans come up the River Salt into Bishop Salford, and now totally disappeared. Um, and various other things, our water bowls are gone. And I notice here on this that um, there is evidence of water bowls, they're protected. We have no dormice, well, that's not surprising. But they've also found great crested newts, and people know my love of great crested newts. In fact, in the town council, I was known as a great crested newt lady, and I still get a bit of stick about that. 
We've got possible pipistrelle bats, they are protected. And also we've got nine red-listed birds and 12 amber-listed species were noticed and breeding on the site. Now there's a lot of disruption as heavy traffic comes in and out. What can we do if this goes ahead to actually make sure that we do not kill or displace our beautiful wildlife around Bishop Salford? That are protected species. Yes, uh, the council has gone on to um, the section biodiversity, <coughs> which is 8.6.4 kilometres. Um, the Hudson Middlesex Wildlife Trust has taken a very keen interest in these proposals for all the reasons that the councillor has mentioned. Uh, and a very thorough survey work has to be done by the applicants in order to uh, satisfy them and ourselves that species that are protected uh, are going to be properly looked after in the future, they won't be threatened by construction work or by the uh, immediate presence of residential or business properties subsequently. And the environmental statement includes a number of <coughs> means of mitigation um, by good management of the site, by ensuring that um, uh, various habitats are not threatened, and we heard reference earlier to the way in which uh, habitats are used by badgers, and we have to ensure that there's proper access for them to various foraging areas and so on. It's quite a complicated set of requirements, but they are uh, secured by condition or through section 106 agreements, through the green infrastructure management plan and in other ways. So it is a critical area uh, and at the end of the day there is also the statutory protection for these species. But the um, House of Middlesex Wildlife Trust are satisfied with the work that's been done and I have to say the county council officers as well, the countryside officers, have also scrutinised these proposals and they're happy with them at this stage. I accept what you say, but when the other building was done down the town, we were assured our swans would come back. We were assured our kingfishers would come back. We were assured our waterfalls would come back. None of those have come back, and we were assured they would. Quite a, in a sense, a difficult time uh, in taking 
this forward because the government has put a lot of uh, emphasis on sustainable